Good morning, children. Today, we're going to talk about de-essers, lovely little critters. What's a de-esser? It's a machine that removes S's. Why do we need it? Well, S's can be annoying, especially loud on a vocal in the middle of your track. Did we always have de-essers? No. Back in the day when people used to record their vocals this far away from the microphone, there was no need for a de-esser because, well, the capsule didn't freak out. As the years have gone by, I guess the recording technique has changed, and now we record vocals this close, and capsules freak out. P's, B's, and S's. S's are particularly annoying. Now you could say, why don't we just bring them down by hand? That's done. But say your first verse is, she sells seashells by the seashore. Or in French, les chaussettes de l'archiduchesse se sont-elles sèches, archi sèches? Then you do not want to do that by hand. You want a machine. Hence the de Let me show you. First, let's listen to our example vocal. This is Aleph Lenz singing Don't Watch Me Go in solo. She can pull it off. Um, listen carefully to the difference of level between the regular signal and the S signal in this take. Check it out. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. I'll play it again. Now, don't worry about the noises in the back. That's her playing Rhodes at the same time as she's singing, the cloink cloink in the back, that's live music, it's okay. But listen to the, I save myself, but drowning on your shore. S's and H's are very close in this case, check it out. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. All right, just for reference sake, I could come here, look for my S, and then edit that down. Not exactly my favorite sport. But it could be useful for very difficult situations. It had to be said. Now, why don't we just compress it? Since the S is just louder than the rest, we could just compress it, right? Let's try that. Here's our trusty free DJ compressor. Let's listen to that. Pay attention to everything, not just the S's. Pay attention to the whole signal. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. For me to be able to get the S's, I need to compress so much that everything else gets compressed. And why is that? If you look at the waveform, it makes a lot of sense. This S here is actually quieter than the A right behind it, and way, way, way quieter than the drowning part here. And this is what the compressor sees. The compressor in our ears are different. Our ears perceive the S's much louder and much more annoying than the compressor will ever do. So what we need to solve the problem is a compressor that knows what the frequencies are. So we can tell it, hey, that's what I want you to compress. That's a de-esser, let me show you. Here's a very simple de -esser, the one that comes free with Pro Tools. Very simple controls. Frequency, where in the spectrum are you looking for S's? Range, how much are you going to reduce the S's? HF only. That means that instead of compressing the whole range of the signal, it's just going to compress the high end, which supposedly is more transparent. And then there's the listen button. Crucial. Why? Because it lets you set up the de really easily. What it does is lets you hear what the de hears. Not the whole signal, just what you're going to focus on, where the S's are. Because the principle is to say, compress just that. All right, so check it out. This is with the frequency all the way to the top, and I'm going to bring it down. So there's not much at 16K. If I go down to 10K, I start hearing the S's. My guess is that actually much lower than that, say 5. There's a lot of energy in this track at 5K. Maybe the choice of mic, maybe the singer, I don't know. Now, let's listen to what that does on the signal. Saved myself from drowning on new shore. It's very efficient, too efficient. Even though I have the HF only button in, which means it's not going to compress everything, it's just going to get rid of the high end of the signal. It's still too much and sounds very processed. So let's shorten the range. Same spot, just less action. Saved myself. Without sounds like this. I saved myself. With. I saved myself. You'll notice that the first S gets caught, but the second doesn't. 
If I were mixing this track, I probably would decide that this particular de is not working for me right now. Usually it does, in this case it doesn't. As a side note, this de is really an extension of what a DBX 902 used to function like, and I think it would be interesting to listen to what a DBX 902 used to function like because it was in every studio in the world, and I happen to have one. So I have a DBX 102 inserted as an I.O. loop in Pro Tools on my track, so you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. I saved myself from drowning on you shores. Different animal. Without, sounds like this. I saved myself from drowning on you shores. With. Saved myself from drowning on new shores. The 902 is actually better than the Digi DSer at catching that second S. It's got a little darker tone. I think that's probably because my 902 needs to be recapped. Don't tell anyone. But not quite what I'm looking for. Still sounds a little artificial. Let's keep looking for another tool. There are a lot of cool DSers around on the market, and they all have different sets of features, and each and every one of them has one different little advantage. And so it's cool to have several so you can find the one that works for your track. Here I have the Massey. Steven's great. His plugins are really affordable. They always work awesome. Uh, customer service is great. It's worth the investment. His DSer is an yet another extension of the 902. It does a couple cool things that I want to show you. The first thing is it has this auto mode where whenever you hit the frequency knob, you go into that, you know, that listen mode. So if I play the track, it sounds like this. I say I think this is about right for us. Notice that the writing on this box has no matching whatsoever with the writing on the other box. The other box said 5K, this box says 3.6, and I'm hearing about the same thing. Why is that? Probably because the filter is different. Don't always believe what's written on the box. Let's de-s this. I saved myself. Again. I saved myself. Another cool feature is if you turn the listen on and hit this button, you can actually hear the difference, meaning what you are removing from the signal by itself. Check it out. Isn't that magical? So obviously I'm being a little brutal here. Okay, that sounds great. Now let's listen to the full signal. I saved myself. It used to be like this. I saved myself. With. I saved myself. I still hear the first one a little bit too much. So Steven has put an interesting feature here, which is a dry wet signal. What does that do? Well, if you consider the DS signal wet, and the un DS signal dry, you can actually bring back some of the dry signal into the wet signal and compensate and do a nice balance between DS, un DS, everything in phase. It sounds like this. If I bring some of the dry, it sounds like this. I saved myself. Fully DS. I saved myself. Now, these things are subtle, but this is the difference between a demo and a record. So if I go a little further on the dry, I saved myself. We're getting there. And if I bypass it, as a reminder. I saved myself. Pretty obnoxious. With. I saved myself. It works great, but it's not what I need for this particular track. I could see it working for a vast majority of tracks, but in this case, I need something a little different to be able to catch the two different level of S's and that H in the back. So let's look at something else. This is the Waves Renaissance de -esser. It has one cool trick that I use when I'm stuck like this. I can go in sidechain, just like in the Massey, it's the same as the listen button in the Digi, and listen to what's going on. And choose my frequency here, and find out where my S's are, first step. That sounds good to me. Little difference here, I'm using an actual bandpass filter, meaning that I'm listening to this part of the signal, as opposed to a high pass filter that just goes like this. It sounds like this. This is bandpass. This is high pass. 
meaning that the DSO will respond to things that are happening above my filter frequencies, whereas with the bandpass, it's just going to focus on that one spot. Now, there's two modes here, wideband and split. That's the same as broad or HF only on the 902 or on the DG. Those are the two modes, okay? Same exact thing, different names. They just want to confuse us. Very successful at confusing us. To use this, I just switch back to audio and lower my threshold until I'm happy with the signal. I say, Not enough. I say, Not enough. Uh, let's go crazy. I saved myself. So just like the other ones, it's too much for the first one and just about right for the second. But this plugin has a range control. Wait, I can explain. The range control is also in dBs. And what it does is allows you to tell the DSer how far it can go. You can put a limit on how much it can DS. So no matter how low your threshold is, and no matter how hard the DSer is willing to DS, you can tell it, no, 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 no more than 6 dBs, and that's it. You can do 2 dBs, you can do 4 dBs, but you can never do more than 6 dBs, or 5 dBs, or whatever you choose. It's a great way to make the DSer super sensitive by lowering the threshold so that every S or anything that resembles an S will trip it. But then you limit how much it can trip. And it works like this. Let's try five with the same threshold as before. Remember, this is without the range. I saved myself. And this is with a range of five ish. I saved myself. So now the first S, even though it's much louder than the second S and is freaking out the DSer, because of the range, it's just getting a little bit DSed and it works. I'll play it again without anything. I saved myself. With the DSer as is. I saved myself. From and as a reminder, without the range control. I saved myself. And this is with a range of five. Again. I saved myself. Definitely more even between the two S's and more natural than what we had before. This seems to be the right tool for this problem. Am I super, super happy with this? Not bad. Can I do better? Maybe. Let's try something else. Next is the Oxford suppressor from our good friends at Sonox. Full disclosure, I had a fairly heavy hand in helping design this thing, so it does what I want, so I like it. This is a slightly different principle. It's broader and does more things, but you can use it to DS. So the way you use this is go on inside mode and listen to just the part you're going to work on. I saved myself from drowning on your shore. Maybe somewhere like this. The cool thing about this one is if you noticed, when I play the signal, there's a red line, vertical, that shows me where the most energy is at that moment in the signal. And I bet you that's where the S's are. See, I missed it. it. I'm a little too low, so I'm going to go higher, a little higher. See, that's where the S is. This is where the rest of the energy is. The D is here, and the, S, the SH is at 41. So I'm able to actually have a broader band here and take care of all that stuff at once. It's very nice. It's a little bit like the band pass in the ways, but more precise and more flexible. So the next thing I would do is turn on the effect, Go back to listen to my full signal and lower my threshold. I say, I say, lower. I saved myself from drowning on you shore. That works nice. Let's focus on the first two S's. Maybe even lower. I saved myself. As a reminder, we started here with no DSing. I saved myself. With saved myself. It's super smooth. You can push it further by hitting the access button and now you have full control over everything. Attacked, damping, wherever the trigger is in the band or actual fully level related. It can get really intense. There's also a wet dry signal here so you can tuck in the dry back under the wet like you do on the Massey. One setting I use is this one, the ratio here. I can actually decide that I'm going to be a little more brutal on the S's. It sounds like this. I saved myself. So say I'm going to limit the range a little bit like the waves. Less compression, but at lower threshold. I 
saved myself. Or a lot of compression at a higher threshold. I saved myself. Option A, this just was not very good. So I'll switch back to low threshold and a limited amount of compression. I saved myself. This is an amazing plugin and it's not just for DSing because it's full range. So you can actually remove something of the like of an S, like some short burst of energy, automatically, very easily. I think we should try something else, just because we can. I wanted to show you the EOSIS because it's fairly new, so not as many people know it, and I think it has its own merits. The way it functions is this way. Detection, sibilance, and voice. Detection is your key, the listen thing. The sibilance is the S's, and then voice is the rest of the signal. The thing that's different here is you can actually process EQ, the sibilance, and the voice separately. It can be useful. Check it out. So first, let's listen to the key. Lower, lower. Okay, it understands both my first and my second S very well. And then, once I heard that, I can say, oh, let's just listen to the S's, just like I did on the Massey. Isn't that pretty amazing? It just You just hear the S's. And then, just the rest of the signal. The difference here is it didn't care whatsoever about drowning, right? That's pretty nice. So now, what can I do with this? Well, since I have both signals separated, I can, for example, add some brightness to just the voice signal, but not the S. Saved so I can retain that thing that maybe other DSs would remove, depending on what the signal does, without touching the S. And if I put the two of them back together, it sounds like this. I saved myself from drowning. And the drowning is not touched. Another cool thing here is I can also process the S. So if I'm listening to just the S's, okay, I could make the S brighter. Why would I do that? Well, say if I make the S brighter, but quieter, it won't feel dull. It should feel right at the right level and at the right color. Like this, just quiet. Okay, and the signal together. Maybe even less. Not that much. Saved myself without I saved myself with I saved myself. It's a little more complicated to set up and more intense to learn, but if you set it right, you can really get the feeling that you have a special fader just for S's. And that's that's a good feeling if you fight with the S's a lot. So I'd like to review everything we've seen today. First, the built-in DGDSer which gives us the basic principle on how it works. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. Then the 902, one of the original designs. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. Then we see what Stephen Massey does with the cool wet dry ratio. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. The waves with the ranch feature and the band split. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. Saved myself from drowning on new shores. The Oxford, super precise, razor sharp, lots of features, CPU hog. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. I 
saved myself from drowning on new shores. And then the fairly newcomer Iosis that does tricks that nobody else does. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. I saved myself from drowning on new shores. So which one's the best? I don't know. It depends on your track, your S's. Do you like a bright UI, a dark UI, big knobs, small knobs, do you have a fast CPU, do you like numbers, no numbers? It's up to you, really. This was an overview of the available features. Hopefully, now you know how to deal with the answers. Et voilà! <laughs>